fantastic Thursday. Wake up, wake up. It's the first of the month. Let me know where the, if you know where that song is coming from. <laughs> and we got day two to discuss a lot of different topics as Alabama continues to power through fall camp. All right. So where do we start? And I think a great place to start out with on day two is we continue to see the weapons. You see Jalen Milrow right here bombing it out to Kendrick Law, who's going to have a fantastic season. Just wait. You got Austin Mack right here bombing it out to Ryan D. Williams doing his job. You got Ty Simpson uh, hitting on a deep ball as well. And my point is, you, you, I mean, that was Caleb Odom. I mean, this team has so many dynamic weapons, and I cannot wait to see how Coach Kalen DeBoer utilizes these players and their talents in the schematics under new offensive coach Nick Sheridan, who I think is going to do a great job with Jalen Murrow. You're already starting to see that progression. Now it's just a matter of time. We heard from Coach Kalen DeBoer on Wednesday, the first practice. He's not wearing the straw hat. He's wearing the ball cap. A little sunburn, but feeling good. Bringing the energy early in the morning. Do you like the morning practices? I like the morning practice. I'm still kind of getting used to it, but it kind of makes the whole day about Alabama football, which I don't mind because this is what I do for a living. So I love it. I think when you look to the quarterback situation, I brought this up on another video. I kind of get the feeling that Austin Mack is third quarterback. Let me know if you agree with that inside the comment box. Just kind of looking at the quarterbacks down the road. I have seen, um, you know, Jalen Murrow looks so comfortable and he is the leader. And we're going to talk on the back end of this video about leadership and kind of that mentality as we heard uh, Malachi Moore speak about that. So stick around for that later on in my segment tonight. And I appreciate you guys being here. By the way, let me know where you're watching from uh, inside the coming back so I always appreciate uh, interacting with all of you from across the country right here on Bama football on YouTube uh, continue to hear really good things about the running backs and you shouldn't be surprised to uh, hear that that's nothing shocking I mean you have Justice Haynes Jan Miller and depending on the websites that you read or whatever you know news coverage that you have these guys it doesn't matter who's number one or number two depending on the formations these guys are going to be able to get the job done I don't know I mean I you can talk about maybe the Ohio State running backs, but outside of those guys, I think Alabama has the best running back room in the entire country. Um, still want to see more of Daniel Hill and Kevin Riley and, of course, Richard Young and the opportunities that he gets. But, man, just looking at the one and two combo uh, looks really good for the Alabama Crimson Tide. I love this soundbite coming up, and this is from yesterday. Coach Kalen Ward, and I, I like to listen to the press conferences a couple different times just to get an understanding of, you know, what they said, kind of let it sink in a little bit. And I felt this was a really good clip from Coach Kalen Ward yesterday speaking about Tell the Truth Sunday. And I think that's important, right? After the game, you got to be honest with yourself. What did we do right? But most importantly, what didn't we do right? So we can get it on track. And I think that applies to Fall camp football. Here's that quote from Coach Kalen DeBoer. This is about Kalen DeBoer talking, tell the truth Sunday. I like this. Yeah, yeah. No, I I mean, I, you got to be real. Um, and that's what I, I tell our guys. And, you know, I'm going to tell our, our team on a Sunday, um, you know, after a game, it, what it was, you know, it's, it's tell the truth Sunday. And we got to be real. And then, you know, it, it, when it comes to games, everyone can see it. You know, if you got to be better or if it was a great day, um, I mean, I think it's usually pretty obvious. Uh, and when it comes to practice, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, we can't just gloss over things ever. We got to we gotta understand where we're at and uh, we have relationships with each other so we can be real and um, hold each other accountable. And uh, today, I thought it was a great practice. Um, anytime, you know, and every day, there's things to learn from. You learn from the good, you learn from the bad, you learn from others' mistakes um, and your own. And so uh, a lot of that happened today the good, the bad, the mistakes, and uh, we get to go watch film. We get to talk about it here, team meeting, and uh, we got a real, it was a positive day. Um, I really feel like we've made the most of every practice since I've been here going back to this spring. Good clip right there from Coach Kelly Nabor talking about Tell the Truth Sunday. Now, one of the things that I want to be honest about is the first team offensive line and the second team offensive line and what it looks like right now if Alabama was to have a game on Saturday. It's always what I like to talk about is like what's happening right now. And I think it makes people's ears perk up a little bit uh, when we talk about the Alabama offensive line because, you know, right now to this point in time on August 1st, 
Caden Proctor is not starting with the Alabama first team offensive line. And that's honestly by design. He's got to work his way back. So when you look at this graphic right here, you see the second team offensive line. You already know the first team offensive line, but let's talk about that second team offensive line real quick. And I think it's kind of exciting to talk about the second team because you get to see some guys um, that we don't really talk enough about. And I think these guys, if called on, especially in a grind type season, and what I mean by that is like this season, you're going to have to play. If you want to win the championship, you're going to have to win like 16 games, okay? Um, so you're going to need everybody on board. So right now, what the second team looks like, and you already know the first team, all right? So you got Elijah Pritchett on the first team. You got Tyler Booker. You got Parker Brailsford, uh, Jaden Roberts. By the way, he graduated today. There, there's a photo floating around of these guys. Man, I should have talked, should have spoke about that. Uh, man, um, uh, Q Robinson, Devontae Smith, um, Robbie Oots, uh, Jaden uh Roberts, uh, I'm trying to think who else uh, graduated. My goodness, nobody could ever take your uh, graduation away. So, man, I, I should have had the graphic uh, prepared for that. So, my bad. But don't forget to look that up on Alabama's Instagram account. Uh, but here's the second team. So, you got Rock Montgomery and Miles McVeigh. So, one of the things that I want you to, to look at on this particular graphic, look to the center position and look to the right guard position. These two right now are interchangeable. So, on Wednesday, you had Rock Montgomery working at the center position. You had Geno Vandermark, who transferred in from Michigan State, working at right ta right guard. Excuse me. So those two were swapped today, and you had uh, Geno Vandermark working at the center position and Rock Montgomery working at the right posi right guard position. Now, I said this on an earlier video that I had. It was more of a, a quicker, quick hit type video. I think Rock Montgomery and Miles McVeigh. These guys are underrated, and uh, Miles McMay is a monster. He's a big man, and Rock Montgomery's a quality interior offensive lineman. So let's not lose sight of these offensive linemen that are in second team. And if you see Caden Proctor right now working with the second team, hey, look, you got to work your way up. You're not entitled just because you came back to be the starter. Um, I think he will get to that starting spot at, at one point in time. And someone posted a good question inside the comment box, and I don't know if this is true because just because you play right tackle doesn't mean you could play – left tackle and vice versa. So someone asked, they were like, okay, let's say we get to the season or a couple games in and Caden Proctor is a starter at left tackle. Does that mean that Pritchett goes to right tackle, right? So if Caden Proctor goes to left tackle, does that mean that Pritchett's now right tackle? Because you have Form B right now on the first team. I thought that was kind of just something to chew on. Um, I think that if Proctor is able to win that spot, then you still keep Form B at that right tackle position. But I want to hear from you inside the comment box. Um, you know, it, it was interesting to hear um, a couple sound bites today. And I'm going to talk about the, the defensive back uh, field in just a second. But hearing Coach Womack talk about the kind of resurgence of a player that I think is really special to Alabama, and that's Jaheim Otis. Jaheim Otis, a couple years ago, came on and had a monster season. Um, listening to uh, Coach Womack speak again today, I think he said he came over at 400 pounds, like 415 or something like that. His body transformation is really significant, probably one of the most that I've ever seen in college football. Let's chew on that. Is there another player that's kind of gone through that big of a weight change, right? I know Tim Keenan's gone through a lot. I, I kind of think of, I uh, remember Deontay Brown, um, who was an offensive lineman, but Jaheim Otis, man, that guy shed, you know, what, 100 pounds or something like that. It, it's really remarkable. I can't wait to see what he can do for Alabama this year. So the quote is, very pleased with the, the way he's taking care of his body. So far, I've seen him picking up things very quickly. And again, Malachi talks about this on his press conferences, the complete difference between Kane Womack's defense and Nick Saban's defense. I mean, they're completely different. And uh, it's going to take these guys a while to um, kind of pick up, you know, the schematics of this new defense, the swarm type defense from Kane Womack. Let's talk about that defensive back depth chart right now. Now, if Alabama had a game today, you're going to hear me say that, or on Saturday, right? This is how the secondary would look. And, and look, things are changing. There's a lot of guys. Um, there's a interviews. There, there's some interviews out there with Mo Linquist today talking about the secondary. But from what I understand, Damani Jackson, Xavier Brown, those guys are the first team guys right now. Xavier Brown, man, as a freshman to come over, I, and I know we hype up all the freshmen, but to be hyping up like guys like Ryan Williams, we're excited to see him, right? Anything we get, Ryan Williams. But, man, Xavier Brown was here in the springtime. He was a starter in the springtime. He's probably going to be a starter going into this first game of the season. I get it. You got Deshaun Jones who's going to be very, very talented as well. Jalen Mbakwe pressing. Um, but, man, like, you got some freshmen in this group, on this team, Alabama, that are certainly going to do their thing. Uh, can't wait to see. Um, even Damani Jackson, honestly, I'm, I'm so excited to see 
his progression from USC to Alabama. I think he has a very high ceiling. I don't think he's anywhere close to being maxed in terms of his potential. Do you agree with me? I want to hear from you on Damani Jackson. Um, I wanted to talk about this particular soundbite. I thought it was great. It's probably one of the best soundbites that we've had uh, so far. And it's from Kane Womack talking about defensive pressure. Now, defensive pressure is so important in the game of college football. Kane Womack is about to rattle out how many defensive pressures there were in the NFL and how that tra translated to turnovers. In my opinion, turnovers win a vast majority of football games. Um, I think you would probably agree with that yourself. So that's a big philosophy of Kane Womack's defense. And I remember when um, Kane Womack was first hired here, I was talking to some people and they're like, you know what? You're going to see the amount of turnovers greatly increase. That is something that they want to do. So whether they're rushing forward, they're sending guys on the blitz. Um, this is a great soundbite about Kane Womack's uh, philosophy in terms of pressure. Here's a defensive coordinator for Alabama, Kane Womack, talking about pressure. Well, I think, um, you know, you look at pressure a number of different ways, right? Some of it is just natural. Can we go four down and be able to, you know, create pressure on the quarterback off the edge? You know, we are very focused on takeaways here and creating takeaways. And you create takeaways by creating pressure on the quarterback, right? You looked at, we looked at all, uh, all seven, there was like 751 uh, takeaways in the NFL last season, all right? And out of those, right, the vast majority of them come from the pressure on the quarterback, whether they hit the quarterback, got hands on the quarterback, or they were able to put him in an uncomfortable position to where he forced to throw. And so for us, I think we've got some guys naturally that can do that off the edge. You know, to me, Jamarian Latham, LT Overton, I think, I think I've seen a, a lot out of that wolf room right now. I think Keanu Coat, Quay Russell, Q Robinson are doing some great things. Um, and then you've got some younger guys like Yonze Pierre that are starting to step up. Keon Keeley off the edge of the field and Jordan or not. I mean, I, I've really been pleased with some of the rush that we've been able to create. And then naturally our backers and safeties have a lot of instinctive, uh, uh, what we call blitz awareness. Um, we look for that whenever we're recruiting players. Does a guy, a second level player have great blitz awareness? And I think you naturally, we have that from, from a couple of our safeties and backers. That's Coach Kane Womack uh, talking about defensive pressure. Love the soundbite. And I like his overall philosophy. My goodness, I don't even think he's 40 years old. Uh, so to be able to take over, you know, uh, and can we get an age check on that? And how old is Coach Kane Womack? And I was thinking about this earlier. It's like the, the age of these coaches at Alabama. I mean, look, these guys um, might be finishing practice early, but it's not like they're going home. Uh, to be with their kids and family like right now they're in the grind season so coaches are working still like from 7 a.m to like 9 p.m 10 p.m i promise you um these coaches aren't just like finishing up practice and be like all right i'm out no 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 like they're putting in the grind absolutely um but i think when you look to the pressure like who can provide pressure for alabama what are you going to see from alabama's coming off the edge you got lt overton by the way the update on him he's gonna be fine he's just not feeling well uh but you have keanu co uh q robinson uh he was a graduate yanzi pierre a young guy keon keely in his new position um you know bigger guy who i think uh based off his athleticism could really get to the quarterback and provide some of that pressure that alabama is looking for um, you know, I thought this was a really good soundbite as well, coming from Coach Cam Womack, talking about uh, the secondary and talking about how Keon Sab has impacted the secondary, but also talking about the inside linebackers. And one name that he really brought up today, and this was surprising, was talking about uh, Justice Jefferson. Oh, uh, Justin Jefferson. He's the other guy who graduated. My bad. And, you know, you had Jaha Campbell, inside linebacker, and you had Deontay Lawson, right? Those are your plugs the inside linebacker but man to hear the praise that justin jefferson gets from kane womack i thought that was really impactful here is coach kane womack talking about uh kane w talking about keon sab throwing in a little bit of malachi moore but also talking about those inside linebackers really great soundbite here's coach kane womack Keon is a very special talent. Um, obviously, he had some tremendous uh, uh, 
production, you know, at Michigan, won a national championship there. Um, and, and we were very fortunate to be able to have that production and that experience because experience is finite, right? Uh, and so for us, um, I think he has done a really good job of leaning into our scheme, what we do. I thought from day one, week one, he did a really great job of going the extra mile to get the verbiage and the terminology down so that he could go execute and play at a high level. And now you see him starting to lead on the back end, uh, you know, him, Malachi Moore. I think those guys are doing a tremendous job of communication on the back end. The spring portal window. And, and what does a guy like Deshaun Jones with the experience? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, again, we talk about how experience is finite, right? So if you can find it somewhere, right, it, it, it obviously is great to have on your roster. I think Day Day's doing a really great job. Uh, you know, he has really changed his body. You think about seniors and guys that, you know, that are maybe a little further down in their career, they may not be able to push quite as far as the development of a freshman, but I thought he's made tremendous strides in eight weeks uh, in terms of changing the, the makeup of his body. I think he's playing very fast right now. He he seems to be playing with confidence in the first couple of days. Again, time will tell, right, of those guys that have not played, you know, in the SEC the last couple of years across the board, whether they can handle those things. But I think they are taking steps in the right direction against what I would argue some, some very good skill players on our offensive side right now. That's Coach Kane Womack uh, talking about Justin Jefferson, Malachi Moore, Keon Sab. Um, the last item that we're going to talk about is Malachi Moore and the leadership that he brings to Alabama. I think when you look to the offensive side, you have your leaders, right? Tyler Booker, uh, you have Jalen Milrow. Those are your guys who are your pillars, right? Well, who's your third pillar? Clearly, it's Malachi Moore. Um, I don't know if there's a better ambassador for the University of Alabama on the defensive side of the ball, to be honest. Uh, I think all the great things that Milrow has done, like going up to New York, CBS in the morning, um, right? You start to see Alabama football, um, you know, outside, like on a national stage. And Malachi Moore is that guy as well. You know, I kind of think back to past people who he kind of reminds me of, you know, being humble, down to earth, a leader, uh, Minka Fitzpatrick. And I know many years ago, he they were calling him like Minim mini mink um i i don't know because uh, look they're, they're different players in a sense but they both are great ambassadors of the program and i hope he has an amazing season he's the lone vet coming back in that secondary um he spoke today about leadership and kind of the new defense under kane womack it's a completely new defense as i mentioned earlier in the show um between kane womack and nick saban here's a uh, malachi moore um in that soundbite I really feel like our whole team is kind of coming together as leaders, I would say. Um, we don't limit anybody to what they can say, even if they're not on leadership or anything like that. Uh, anybody can call out anybody if they um, feel the need to. And I think that's one thing that we've been really accepting to for a freshman telling a senior, like, hey, come on, man, pick it up. Um, we're not wearing a heart on our sleeves or taking anything personal. Everybody's just trying to uh, reach the same goal. That's a big difference from uh, spring practice to fall camp. Uh, I would just say the intensity. Um, you're closer to the season, so it's a little bit more um, readiness. You're a little bit more anxious to get everything started and get back into the flow of things. And the heat. Yeah. Coach mentioned that Jalen Bachman, that guy's made a lot of strides. What have you noticed yeah. on him Yeah. And by the way, he's been doing a great job. He's a very smart learner. He's very um, – he's like a sponge. All of our young guys are like sponges. Um, uh, just soaking up as much information as they can and – Always trying to find little and better ways to 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 get better. And Coach Moe's been doing a great job with our corners. They're very technical, sound, and um, they have great technique, and they have a better understanding of the game uh, under Coach Moe. I really appreciate you guys watching and supporting the content right here on Bama Football on YouTube. That was Malachi Moore. You can watch those full interviews on our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you, being, thank you very much for being a part of the Undefeated. A way that you can support me, honestly, is by becoming a member of our Fan Funder Club. It's only $2.99 per month to support the YouTube channel. Really support me. I'll drop a link uh, inside the comment box. That would really, really help me out. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for supporting me. I 
hope you guys like the content, you know, trying to do something different, um, you know, with the channel in terms of the content that I provide. It's important to me that I bring you a high level quality product every time I step onto the field, because, you know, as I said, uh, you know, as the intro says, you know, this is the champagne of, of Alabama football and we want to continue to keep it quality. And I really appreciate you guys being here from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Kyle Henderson, Alabama football on YouTube. I appreciate you guys. And I will talk to you guys next show.